Assalamualaikum everyone. Welcome to this special bonus session all about fasting as a pregnant or breastfeeding mother. We have a very special guest with us today. We have registered dietitian Dima Al Sayed who is going to be talking to us about some of the challenges that pregnant and breastfeeding mothers face while fasting and some important points to consider when deciding if you are able to fast this year. Now, just as a point before we jump in, of course, on an online program such as this, we can't give any specific recommendations for your specific medical conditions or about your specific situation. It's really, really important to consult with your doctor, especially when making the decision to fast in Ramadan. What we can provide you and what Dima is providing you as a dietitian is her expert opinion and her recommendations and some points for you to consider and bring up and raise with your doctor to just keep you better informed and make you more aware of what you'll be facing, challenges you'll be facing as you're fasting this Ramadan. So without further ado, I'm going to bring up Sister Dima, inshallah. So Dima is originally from Syria. She lives in Winnipeg, Manitoba um, with her husband and her two daughters. And she has a Bachelor's of Science from the University of Manitoba. And she's a working and practicing registered dietitian in Winnipeg. So I know she's very passionate about this topic, about speaking with pregnant and breastfeeding mothers, about fasting and making the decision to fast. So without further ado, please welcome Sister Dima. Assalamualaikum, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. Talking about fasting while pregnant is a very sensitive subject. I've uh, met so many uh, expecting mothers who are unsure whether they should be fasting or not during their pregnancy. And I know if you Google in the internet, uh, you will find, you know, scholars of Islam have different opinions about it. So there are those who uh, will say if you're worried about the infant or the fetus, then you should so and do so and so. If you're worried about your health, then you should do so and so. Those are very valuable opinions, obviously. Uh, they, uh, they reach those conclusions after a thorough research. Um, my advice here as a dietitian is to ask yourself. So no one knows your body more than yourself. And uh, it's different from one person to another. It's different from your pregnancy of one of your children to another pregnancy of your own children. Uh, some pre pregnancies are easier than others and depending on the hours that you're fasting. So uh, maybe one of your pregnancies was in winter where the hours of fasting are very short and quick and easy or other pregnancy uh, happen to be in long days, hours. So those things are really important to keep in mind before you make this decision. Those nine months are crucial for, for baby's uh, health, and they're actually linking many of the chronic conditions that will show up later in life, in adult's life, uh, to a condition that the fetus had, had experienced while they were in their mom's womb. So it is very, it is not as simple as it might seem. So keep those in mind. I've uh, done a quick research about the subjects from a scientific point of view, not an Islamic point of view. And I found this uh, really good study that found that in healthy women uh, with appropriate nutrition, so their eating habits are healthy and balanced, fasting had no inappropriate outcome on their pregnancy. So they took into consideration the weight of the baby at born uh, time and uh, the growth rate of the pregnancy. So there was no negative outcome. However, that study uh, does not uh, does, is speaking to a population that was uh, fasting in the same length of time. So it was not comparing uh, someone who's fasting in Egypt with someone who's fasting in Canada. And those are really important consideration because we all know that um, fasting eight hours is not a big deal compared to fasting 16 or 18 hours a day. So this is very, very important. Okay, so really important. We've mentioned that it's not just a simple yes or no answer. It's different for every single pregnant mother. It's different for each of her pregnancies even. And it's also different based on where she lives, how long that she's fasting. There's a lot of complex factors that are going into whether it's safe and possible for her to fast. 
So the follow-up question I have for that then is how does a pregnant woman make that decision safely, whether it's safe for her to fast this year? How does she make that decision? So uh, it's really important before you're taking this decision to fast while pregnancy is to speak to your doctor about fasting and explain to them what fasting means in our religion. Because as you know, different faiths have different uh, definitions of fasting. So keep that in mind. Explain to your doctor uh, what fasting is and uh, let them know that it's no drinking or eating for the hours of the day. And uh, make sure that you're being tested for um, all the conditions that might develop during pregnancy, such as gestational diabetes. So once you're cleared for that, and once your doctor is okay um, with uh, you fasting, then uh, be mindful of anything that you might be experiencing during the day. Um, remember that it is okay to break your fast. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had allowed us uh, to break our fast when we're feeling ill, or if you're on a journey. So it is really important to um, think about not just ourselves, but the baby that is growing inside us. It's a huge responsibility. And we don't have the right to make that decision for our babies. Um, our decisions during uh, pregnancy actually affect our children on the long run. So I'm really glad that you mentioned that because, for example, I had a friend who was pregnant and I was asking her, are you going to fast this year? And she said, yes, I'm definitely going to fast. And when I asked her why, she said that because she didn't want to fast later on in the year alone by herself. She just wanted to get the Ramadan fast over with together with her family. And while I completely understand and sympathize with that, at the same time, as Dima mentioned, this is not a decision that we can make based on personal preference, convenience, or even how difficult it will be to fast later on. This is a decision that has to be made with approval from your doctor, considering the health of your baby as first and foremost priority. So with that said, Dima, what are some of the major health concerns for pregnant women, pregnant mothers who are fasting? What do they need to be aware of that are the serious concerns that they risk when fasting while pregnant? The one major concern for uh, fasting while pregnant is dehydration. It is very crucial for the safety of the fetus and the growth of the um, pregnancy to make sure that you're having enough fluids during your non-fasting hours uh, there are many ways to get your fluids. Water is the best. Soups, fruits. Uh, you can also have low sugar jello if you want. That's uh, that's a really good source of fluid if you're not feeling like drinking water, especially in pregnancy, especially at in the third trimester where the fetus is pushing on the internal organs. Sometimes drinking and eating will feel like a very uh, difficult task. So in order to accommodate that, um, smaller portions over the breaking hours will be ideal. Uh, however, we know that life sometimes is, uh, can't allow us to do that. We have to sleep. Um, but uh, for those who their life allows them to you know, stay awake during the non-fasting hours and have smaller portions uh, of frequent meals, this is probably way better than having two major meals, such as like iftar and suhoor. And remember to test, to check with your inner self. If you're feeling that you can't make it, then uh, obviously you should stop. Um, and I've, I've seen friends and people uh, in my circle who, um, I've seen someone who fasted while pregnant and ended up in the hospital for dehydration. And I've seen uh, someone else who had a condition on top of their pregnancy, but uh, actually felt that her fasting helped her control her medical condition. So everybody's different. And uh, remember that Allah had given us good permission uh, not to fast if we're feeling ill or if we're traveling. And I think pregnancy... Uh, can fit in between those uh, two uh, categories. When you're pregnant, you're not feeling at the max of your health. And, actually, and this is a journey for the baby. So keep that in mind. So if the fast gets to the point where a pregnant mother might be endangering herself, endangering the health of her baby, what are some warning signs that she can look out for to indicate that she might want to consider breaking her fast? 
So everybody's different and every expecting mother's experience is different from others. Um, so I don't think there are clear signs and symptoms that we should be looking for. What you should be uh, mindful of is um, how you're feeling. Uh, are you experiencing too much thirst? Are you experiencing a level of irritation uh, that you've never experienced before? Yes, obviously we all don't feel super um, energetic during fasting, but is this an ex a level of uh, low energy that you've never had before? You might be experiencing gest gestational diabetes uh, that has gone undiagnosed. Insulin resistance in pregnancy is is different from um, while you're not pregnant. So you might be having a level of, um, of gestational diabetes. It might be not an undiagnosable level, but your blood is not uh, transporting and your cells are not intaking the glucose that they used to do be prior to pregnancy. So keep that in mind. Watch for signs and symptoms of irritation, dehydration, uh, thirst, uh, those little things are really great indicators for uh, breaking your fast. And ensure that you are uh, breaking your fast when you're feeling unwell. When you're feeling very thirsty, then you're putting your baby at danger, uh, not only yourself. And, um, and there's really no excuse for doing that. So I think that was really helpful information for pregnant mothers to keep in mind when considering to fast. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about special considerations for breastfeeding mothers. What are special things that they need to consider when deciding if they are able to fast while breastfeeding during Ramadan as well? So if you're breastfeeding and it is the month of Ramadan, uh, you have the option of breaking your fast if, um, if nursing is the only nutrition of your baby. As we know, it's between the age of uh, zero to between four and six months is that age where children start to eat solids. So if you're in the window of zero to four months, then it is highly advisable not to fast during Ramadan because you're pretty much depleting your children's um, source of nutrition. And this is not fair. This is their only food and not uh, providing that for them is actually a level of injustice. Uh, however, if your baby between the age of four to six months, then um, it's really uh, your personal decision whether you want to fast or not. At this point, uh, your child might be ready for solids or might not. It's again, your personal decision. And I think, um, the World Health Organization recommends breastfeeding, purely breastfeeding, until the age of six months. Be mindful of that. Um, after between six months and one year old, your child is relying on other sources of nutrition. Uh, he or she will be eating uh, solids and will be introduced to different uh, various foods and might not be as relying on breastfeeding. So um, if that's the case, again, it is your decision. If, um, is, if breastfeeding is really important for your baby and you're thinking that you are, by fasting, you're actually stopping them from, from this, then also this is not fair. Uh, as we know, it is recommended to breastfeed um, for as long as two years. Stopping that earlier, as early as six months, is probably not recommended. So I think that's really helpful that mothers can make a decision based on the age of their child and the stage that they're at in terms of breastfeeding. I think that's really helpful. So how does a breastfeeding mother go ahead and make the decision whether she is able to fast or not? If you're deciding to breastfeed, make sure that you talk to your doctor about taking this decision if you're breastfeeding. Depending on the uh, health care that you have, but uh, your doctor might not be able to monitor exactly your milk production over the period of time. Uh, it is really you and your baby who's going to know uh, whether fasting is affecting milk production or not. Uh, I've had friends uh, who uh, would monitor the effect of certain foods on their milk production. You know, if they drank, um, you know, a certain 
amount of water, whether their milk production is high or not, a certain amount of food or type of food. So it's going to be your call if, uh, if milk production is reduced and if breastfeeding is declining, then that might be, um, you know, the first uh, signs of weaning. And if you are not ready to wean your child, then that's something that you have to be very mindful of before you decide to fast or not. It is really important to, to remember the length of, of fasting hours. And this is similar to pregnancy. Fasting for a few hours, uh, maybe eight or 10 hours, is might not affect milk production, but fasting for 16, 17 or 18 hours and not having enough time to hydrate and drink fluid, um, it might affect uh, milk production. Just a quick reminder that uh, Allah had given us the option not to fast. It is really recommended uh, to, to make those decisions, especially not fasting, based on the facts and based on the recommendations of your doctor and healthcare provider. Um, it is not just about you. Uh, remember, you're actually declining uh, the baby, their food, by choosing to fast. So keep that in mind uh, when you're deciding to do that. It is at the end your choice, but you have to remember that you're choosing something for your baby and not just for yourself. Well, thank you so much, Dima, for bringing these issues up. I know that this is a difficult topic to discuss because, as Dima mentioned, it's different for each pregnancy. It's different depending on how long your fasts are. It's different depending on the stage of breastfeeding that you're at. And so it's really not as simple as just saying, yes, you can fast or no, you can't. There's different things that each woman has to make and consider uh, depending on themselves and the health of their baby. So if you have any questions about this, I highly encourage you to bring these up with your doctor. It it is an important decision. You're going to be making the fasting days every single day for the month. So before making that decision, consult with your doctor. Make sure that your doctor understands what's included in Ramadan fasts. I mean, we might just take it for granted that of course your doctor understands Ramadan fasting. But keep in mind that in other religions, other cultures, people might have food fasts but not water fasts. In other cultures, the timing and the way that they fast may be different. So it's really important to make sure that your doctor is 100% clear on what Ramadan fasting looks like and then you can get advice on ter in terms of how that specifically applies to your body and your child. So I really hope this has been helpful inshallah. Remember again to speak with your doctor for particular and specific questions and inshallah I hope that you found this beneficial.